In the last two episodes of Plant One On Me, we spoke with Justin Schroeder about the making of the Amazon spheres and explored over 60 species growing on the first level. Now in this episode, we'll make our way to the second floor to see what plants are growing there. Take so a little vivarium yeah, here. Yeah, this is really cool. We have two um, fish tanks in the space as well. This is what we refer to as a paludarium, which is kind of like a fancy fish tank, which means it has elements in the water and out of the water. Um, everything in this tank here is from Borneo. So all the plants and fish and everything are native to Borneo. I would imagine that some of these are actually unidentified as well. Yeah, there's a few kind of unidentified oddballs in here that we're trying to figure out the names on some things like that ficus, for instance. Uh, it's kind of an unknown ficus velosa type. Yeah, I love how it has like some of the, the white speckles that like the begonia maculata yeah. down there would have. but. Yeah, because my ficus velosa is like really tiny, but these are like it's actually shaped. changing quite a bit as it matures. The yeah. leaves when they when we're smaller and immature were much darker in color and much fuzzier, huh. and now it's kind of changing as it grows. Gorgeous. Yeah. You get a nice perspective of the green wall here. Which yeah, we'll you know that was kind of again by design with these open staircases to kind of get a view of the living wall from every angle as you ascend. It looks a little bit more narrow than I recall. <laughs> yeah, it's a narrow path. It's, uh, it was actually meant just to be a service path, but we thought there was too many cool plants back here to yeah. not let people walk and see. Oh, Ludicia discolor, I just want to point that out because it's one that people could really recognize. Yeah, it's one of the uh, easier of the uh, jewel orchids to grow and um, uh, grows really well in here and does kind of a nice little ground cover thing where you'll see it popping up in between other, other things. Well, so. it actually kind of, like this one is a great example. Yeah. It starts to scramble along the ground yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, it's got this like rhizome that yeah. runs around and it just pops up out of it. It's really neat. So this, I, I would stop at. I see that it's flower. It's about to flower right now, but I would originally have thought, hey, this looks like a peperomia. But it's yeah, not. it's not. It's in it's in the Mellowstone family. It's actually uh, come from I believe it came from Fairchild originally, who got it as a weed in another plant that they bought out of Thailand. Wow. So I believe it's still unidentified, but uh, we're working on figuring out what it is. When you see the flowers, it's very very much looks like a typical Mellowstone yeah. flower. This one is also in bloom right now. Yeah, this one goes dormant, so Ooh, um, wow. it just started growing about uh, three or four weeks ago. This is Globa win wintinii. Look at this, it's so neat. Yeah, they look like little, I don't know, I think the common name is like dancing ginger or something. Well, it looks like a little street lamp yeah, like, yeah. just kind of <laughs> hanging over. <laughs> and this alocasia is yeah, pretty common as a house this one is plant. alocasia zebrina, wow, which refers to the- The zebra, the zebra the patterning on yeah, the Yeah, zebra patterning on yeah. the petioles. Ficus deltoidea. Ficus deltoidea. Yeah, that was uh, one we got from Fairchild. Um, well, I know Chad Husby really loves his deltoidea. Yeah, he definitely likes deltoidea. And I think what was really mind-blowing, I think, for a number of people who watched the Fairchild tour is that these are also epiphytes. Yes. In fact, so. we have a few growing in here epiphytically on, on some of our faux stumps, um, which is cool because then you get to see, and you look up at them, you see the patterns on the undersides of these mm -hmm. leaves. Now, you, I, these raphidophoras that I see here, yeah, so we have a few species in here. Yeah, so these heavily dissected leaves on here on that Raphidophora, yeah, yeah. Um, that's uh, Decursiva. Decur De Decursiva, yeah. yes, thanks. You know, it's just really neat to kind of see that mature growth like yes. that. As it's immature, the leaves aren't very dissected. Yeah. And it um, it kind of matures to that shape. Okay, there is something like really, sp I'm not even into pink, but, <laughs> <laughs> but when I see it, in this kind of fashion, especially in these like three plants that you have clustered yeah. here? So this is something that ki we kind of threw together, you know, to highlight some of these, you know, colors you don't typically see in nature is this kind of pink coloration. We have this great unnamed Symbagonia species. Um, is this from like Borneo or where is this from? Uh, you know? I believe it is, um, it is from Borneo. Um, I mean, the pink is almost metallic here. Yeah, it's, um, we haven't got it to flower yet, so yeah. it's not really, we're not able to really get it keyed out completely. It would be really cool if it's a bright pink flower yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then this great Amorphophallus species wow. with that margin that's hot pink. Oh, it's so cool. And then it's we even have some Lobesia in here that as the 
immature foliage comes yeah. out, you get like these kind of cool pink margins as yeah. well. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Alocasias, this is the Reginula. Oh, look at it, it's yep. flowering right here. It's got right flowers here. on it, yeah, yeah. It's been blooming pretty well. That's great. And then this is the Alocasia Friday. Yeah, that's that's a cultivated Alocasia. It's one that's very, very common. And again, we added it so that, you know, people could kind of see something that they're very familiar with. And then we can show them all the other diversity in Alocasias. Here's the Melostone yeah, flowering. There's that so Melostone. You could, you could so you see. can see for sure it's in that Melostone family. Yep. Otherwise, if it was a Peperomi, you'd have that little rat tail mm -hmm. type of flower. Ishcananthus marmoratus, yes, right? This correct. one's the zebra basket vine, yep. also very common. This one's quite a sturdy plant. I, it's growing up towards the light as yeah. opposed to like a hanging, yeah. hanging basket. And then uh, we have this psychotria here. This is psychotria punctata. It's a really interesting. They call this like wild coffee. Um, it's not really. It's not in the coffee. Does it family. have? Oh, it says psychotria. So is yeah. it something that you know? Yes. Works um, with the mind. Exactly. Though? And this one has this really interesting symbiotic blue-green algae that lives inside the leaves. God, that's so cool. There's some belief that this potentially, this blue-green algae might have some toxicities to it, which will prevent uh, herbaceous animals from chewing on it. Um, I don't know if that's been fully proven yet or not. And you haven't chewed on any leaves. I haven't chewed on any leaves, no. <laughs> yet. Yet, no. <laughs> oh, here's a close-up of the, you say rifid, rifid, rif, rifidophora. Rifidophora. I've heard raphidophora. Yeah, I've heard all you know? the different ways to say it. This is, is this an orchid, this yeah, grassy one right here? Yeah, that's a showin orchis. Oh, God, um, that's really yeah, that's a, it gets these cool little strands of purple. Purple and flowers when I, it blooms. I don't want to walk away from the Hoya right here. Yes. Is this Glabulosa? Yes, it's okay. Glabulosa, yes, really, correct. Really good, really nice species right there. One of your bigger begonias yeah, I've seen. Yeah, this is Begonia orococo. Is that the cultivar? No, that it's the a species? species. Ooh, look at this leaf. Yeah, this is a really neat natural variegated leaf on this Exora species. It's really thick. Very Xor thick. Ix, right? Yes. Or is it, yeah. Ixora. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely seen that genus around, but um, I've actually never seen one of the genus in real life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is our uh, Alocasia tigerina, which again, that's the stripes, hard to tell. Yeah. Apart. <laughs> what are the ways that you could tell? Uh, well, the size, the leaf shape. Um, if you, this is a little rounder leaf than the zebrina. Hmm. A little different color too. Zebrina's got a little darker leaf, and this is a little more green. Hmm. I want to point out the impatience repens, just yeah. because I, you could see it in its full glory, kind of just hanging over. Yeah, and this is absolutely how it wants to grow. Yeah. Um, we actually had trouble growing this in the greenhouse because we were trying to contain it into the pot. Yeah. And so we like put it in a hanging basket and then it like, <laughs> it was like draping down like five feet. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love the yeah. red stems. Yeah. I'd love to also show this um, pilia right here that's actually in flower. Which one, which This is an Elatostemma. Oh, it's an Elatostemma, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but it's still in that same Urticaceae. Yeah, it's Urticaceae, okay. yeah. And I, I don't think we have a species name on this one. Okay. Um, we have a few um, Elatostemmas in here, and this one's a, been a really great grower. For, this is so cool. Yeah, this is a, a really interesting rhododendron, actually. Really you wouldn't, get out. I know, you wouldn't think rhododendron and you look at I these leaves. I wouldn't even guess like Podocarpus or something. When you, know? you hear the species name, it makes sense. It's rhododendron taxifolium, so it oh. looks like a taxis. Yes. Uh, it's actually extinct in the wild. It was only found in, well, it's believed extinct. Uh, it was only found on one area in the Philippines. And we've got this one from the rhododendron species garden, which is a local um, nursery and garden um, in Washington. And it's actually done quite well for us and bloomed pretty well. Hmm. It's got white bell-shaped flowers. It's uh, And an really epiphyte as well then. Epiphyte, yes. Okay. Oh, I love these little begonias. Yeah, this is a begonia little darling. Um, it's one of the cultivated varieties. I actually don't think this one is in cultivation anymore, um, but there's a similar one to it. It looks almost identical that's by another name. Does, I, 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 have, I feel like I've seen this one, but like begonias, it's so hard. Some of the cultivars are so similar. But it just had a little, lar like a larger leaf. Yeah, and I think that might be the one that yeah. um, I was referring to. It looks very, very similar, but a little bit larger leaf. Yep. Um, probably same parent on one side. Just some more of that little darling. Yeah, I think this is a great um, place to kind of look and see how some of these things grow. You know, a lot of these rhododendrons, like we were saying before, are epiphytic in nature, especially the subtropical and tropical species. So you get a, 
a look here at how some of these rhododendrons might be growing on the side of an old tree or a stump. And even this one's even got like a little flower on it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I first saw this, I would have thought that this was an agapetes, but these rhododendron are really throwing me yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's, um, you can see the relation in some of these things, you know, they're in the yeah. same family. So, um, you know, you can kind of, kind of see where the similarities lie. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really just, Again, just trying to highlight how, how these things would grow in nature, mm. which, which would be not sort of intuitive for some people to think of a rhododendron as, a, as an epiphyte. Right. These begonias are so hard to grow indoors. <laughs> yeah, we've actually struggled with this one um, a little bit. Uh, we're still trying. We've moved it a few times. Um, it does pretty well in the summer, and then it doesn't do so well in the winter, but we're going to keep, keep working at it. Yeah, more power to you. What, what, do you know what this is? It looks like a nut. Again, it looks like it has this yeah, this, flower that looks like an So these are little, it looks like a fern. This is a fern. Yeah. And it has these little uh, bulbets on here that yeah. grow into little baby ferns, and you pop Ooh, these guys wow. off. Oh, so um, cool. And, grow, and can grow new ones. And does it get spores too, then? Uh, yeah, I do. it does get spores as well. Yeah, okay. Um, but most of its propagation is done mm. asexually like that. Oh, Hoya polynura. Yeah. Fishtail Hoya. Yeah, I think we oh. got yeah some open flowers there. Wow. That just started blooming about two weeks ago. Wow, that is nice. Yeah, I love that fishtail Hoya. That looks like a ficus velosa right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a fic ficus velosa there. Mm -hmm. um, we even have an interesting silver-leafed form of ficus velosa down mm -hmm. here. It's been a re little reluctant to grab on, but we're... Uh, Hopefully that they'll get going. Uh, you know, on sphagnum, it really grabs. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have it in my polydarium at home. This is a alocasia portii, kind of a unique alocasia leaf form with that heavy dissection in it. Yeah, crispy, almost like it has a crispy kind of look. Mm -hmm. now, this to me looks like a costus, but it's. Is it, it is in the ginger family. It's not costus, it's Tepinocylus. Okay. Um, I believe it's native to Africa. Well, here's a nice dead yeah, giveaway you, you with the flower, yeah, too. Yeah, you can see the flowers on yeah. there, the old flowers. Um, it's, it's interesting, too, where it'll send up flowers from the rhizome as right. well as at the tip of the growth points, which is kind of kind of neat. Is this a, ser a, um, a ser serapegia? Um, no, that is, is a, Hoya? a Hoya. Okay. Hoya curtizia? Yes. But very brown. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting lots of reflected light. Yeah. Again, it's just kind of neat how to see how these things would kind of scramble and grow yeah. this way. Ooh. This is a schismatoglottis. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I, I love the, the natural variation, like almost like kind of the aglonema kind uh -huh. of patterning. patterning. Duck under the angiopteris. <laughs> This angiopteris is probably my favorite plant here just because it was my personal plant. I was. This is your personal plant? It was my personal yeah. plant. I did, it was the first plant that we had at our greenhouse because yeah. I had it in my little hobby greenhouse at home and I, you know, a little 10 by 15 greenhouse, there's no way this would grow in there too long. So this was a donation to me about eight years ago from the University of Washington as just like a little baby guy. And wow. So it. So it's found a nice really home. flourished yeah. here. Look at this begonia. Oh yeah, this begonia is one of our favorites. This is begonia ferox. Ferox means ferocious. It's got these interesting bulata on here that uh, you know look like spines. Um, they're very actually not very pokey. And if you look at the bottom side, they're just like little indentations. Oh, wow, look at that. It's so fascinating how they could grow that way. Yeah, and, and a lot of begonias in, um, in tropical Asia grow on limestone. So we actually created this little mm -hmm. limestone mound here with some lava rock mixed in, but I'm um, trying to grow these things a little bit differently to see if we can get a little more success, mm -hmm. um, seeing if they can you know, do better longer with, in their more natural sort of environment. So you don't even... Um you know, put a little bit more alkalinity in the soil because you have the, the limestone there. Yeah, our, our soil is pretty acidic as a base. I mean, a lot of tropical soils are. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we created this kind of more alkaline situation for them. These are great. Yeah, this... these are Begonia Sizemoriae's. Um, Named after Mary Sizemore. Mary Sizemore, yeah. A, a, a veritable Begonia collector. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, this is one of, our favorites and actually most people's favorites when they come in here. Yeah. It's almost, you know, we, we try to discourage everybody touching, but know, this is a hard one. When you so see hard. this fuzzy leaf to come it up. It kind of reminds me of an old man's ear. Yeah, 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 we just, yeah. It's, so we have to like 
keep people from touching during the day, but yeah. um, I, I can understand the draw yeah. on that one for sure. <laughs> Another closely related begonia to Ferox's Milano Bulata. Uh, the spines are just a little bit smaller. Did, 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 did um, botanists ever come up with a theory for why they grow this way? I don't think there's, way? Anything there's anything definitive yet. I mean, some of it refers to like maybe to ward off predation. Maybe it's a way to reflect light yeah. and to absorb it better. Or it could be a way to divert water off the leaves, you know, in a specific way. So as dew and things form on those tips, it, or you know, all of the above. or all of the yeah. above, or something that nobody's even thought yeah, of before. Yeah, exactly. Some more alatostemas, Yeah, right? another alatostema species. This one's got some nice variegation to it, some natural variegation, Dracaena. as well as the Dracaena goldiana. goldiana yep. Your metanilla is in bloom. Yeah, they've been great. They uh, they kind of bloom sequentially, not on purpose. We didn't really design it that way, but we've always got like one doing something. We have a uh, metanilla alata that's blooming now too, which has these great like hanging flowers that are almost see-through, the petals. Yeah. I want to point out the jade vine. Oh, yes, it's in bloom. Yeah, so this is the strong Leodon, uh, Macroboitris, and we planted this a little over two years ago, and um, we, and did, not to we did not expect wow. flowers at this point. This yeah. is very much a surprise, uh, a very happy surprise. Um, I, I thought we were more in like the five year range for flowers, but wow. um, as you can see, if you look up here, we have two, two different species of vines on this area. The lower one is Thunbergia mycerensis, and then at the very top is the rest of the strong Leodon. So most of the foliage is way up there at the top. Again, really even more exciting that we had a bloom way down low like this where people could see it, so, so pleasant it, surprise. You got some Jack of the Pulpits here too. That's yeah, kind of cool. this is a species of Erisema. I think we're still trying to figure out the name on this one. Yeah. This one doesn't go dormant like a lot of other Erisemas do and it's a tropical one from Vietnam. Uh, so it's always got these little green flowers on it, which is a lot of fun. I love green flowers, I don't know why, but. Well, because they're so unusual, that's <laughs> why. <laughs> we like the unusual things. And this Metanilla. Yeah, this is Mandadilla like Gregory Hombalii. Um, and so a lot of the Mandanillas have these clusters of hanging flowers that grow sort of terminally out of the plant. This, this one and a few other species have these coliformis type flowers that bloom off of the stems and then you get, they're followed by these kind of bright reddish pink fruits that cover it as well. I'm just seeing... Uh, oh yeah, we gotta big, point this begonia Yeah, out. this begonia is like really blue. Yeah, it's very iridescent. I'm not sure if even our cameras are gonna pick that up. But well, like, one of the things that's just... neat is you saw that that leaf was kind of covering that spot. Yeah. And you can see the change where the exposure to the light changes right. to the iroplast from the chloroplast come out. That. It's probably hard to catch. And this is a uh, Pelionia. I think this was just put into Procris repent. Yes, yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, but a great, a great plant for indoors. And it's got some flowers on it too. Yeah. <laughs> There's a cool genus here of uh, oh. relative of um, Petrocosmia. Yeah, that's Petrocosmia. It's related to African violets. It's in that family. Um, it grows really flat down onto yeah. rocks and onto the soil and then it'll get little flowers that pop up underneath each one of these leaves when That's it blooms. Great. So then they, the, the, the insect or whomever who pollinates it probably just like crawls in there yeah, and is around. Yeah, yeah, it will get like, they'll pop up, they'll yeah. just be a little bit above the leaf there. Yeah. And yeah, it's really. I love that. Really fun plant. We also have these, uh, I don't know if you noticed these ferns on the walls yeah. here. Yeah. So this, Tell um, me about that. Are these growing out of like cocoa peat or how does so this So there's grow? like a, a bag behind, there's a little gap between the concrete and the steel. Oh, I see, yeah. Um, basically like there's quite a bit of rooting uh, area in there for it. It's just like a little plug with a really kind of sharp draining, almost epiphytic mix. Mm -hmm. um, so each, there's, this is, the bag's about this big. It's about that thick. And we just water over the top of this every day. There's no drip irrigation or anything. And, and these, again, grow very much like this in the wild. They love to grow on cliff sides and grow epiphytically. Plant in a bag, which is <laughs> so clever. Should we highlight these because they're in bloom? Yeah, that's uh, Escenanthus speciosa. It's a huge bloom, Renee. Yeah, it's this. doing great right yeah. now. Just those color, that color contrast of the bright green and the bright orange is, is great. And maybe we end on... Uh, this guy, because this is one my team is very proud of. Oh, it's so the, splendid. The Alocasia cupria. cupria. I always say it looks like a, a 10 pack abs, you know, right there. <laughs> yeah. It's called mirror plant as yeah. well, but 
Maybe yeah. it's worth showing even the purple bottoms. Yeah, the purple this on the underside. This one's a meaty version. I know, we're, we're really, uh, you know, I, I don't, again, it's the placement of the plant, it's the right conditions, the right microclimate. Uh, this one we just got lucky on on the first go. I cry um, a little bit because I know how much they're going for on the houseplant market right now. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we have been so lucky to get the bulk of our plant, plant material has been donated to us and um, we're lucky enough now to be able to give back to the folks that, that helped us mm. um, create this collection. It's, it's really a one of a kind collection and, and the, the speed at which it was amassed is pretty, pretty amazing. Well, should we head up to the third yeah, and fourth Yeah, we'll go floor? check out the third and the fourth. Yeah. Well, we covered about 50 species in this episode, so let me know which ones caught your eye in the comments below. And I'd love for you to support the channel, so take a moment to hit subscribe and tap on the notifications bell so you can be notified when the next episode releases. And take a journey with me through the world of plants and mindfulness in my latest book, How to Make a Plant Love You, which is out now in both English and Dutch. And if you'd like to learn more tactical knowledge of houseplants, then check out the Houseplant Masterclass, the first online audiovisual course on houseplant cultivation, care, maintenance, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.